You guys see the view? Hey, y'all, what's good, y'all? It's the messenger of God, yeah. I just wanted to comment, draw one for y'all today. Um, you know, I had God on my mind all the time, but, um, you know, today I'm going to bring you the Good Samaritan, you know, and while I'm, I'm getting it for you guys, I was just thinking, you know, a lot of times people do not have to tell you to help someone when they're in need or distress. Um, if you see a person, you know, your brothers, your sisters, or someone that you see sometimes. I know that it's, I know that sometimes you just can't because, you know, your your spirit will, will let you know if, you know, if it's not, a, you know, if it's not real. Because sometimes some people be pretending like they need help and they don't because of the way of the world it is today. You know, how many people be, you know, doing things and and stuff like that which is a sad thing because you know it'd be a lot of people really in need but like i said i use my discernment and um the spirit leads me and guides me of who to help you know you don't have to make it like a thing to where you got to always announce you know when you are helping someone or or when you're doing it just let god do it you know in, in, in silent in peace you know sometimes you can see somebody and you can do things for them or walk up to them and hand them something or you know, just just do a good deed, but but you don't have to always just announce it. You know, just just let it be laid on your heart to say, you know what, I want to help someone today. All right, let's get started. The Good Samaritan. Yes. Okay. So, the Good Samaritan. In Jesus' time, the Samaritans lived in Samaria in the central Palestine. Many were descended from people who had settled in Israel after it was conquered by the Assyrians. The Samaritans and the Jews were sworn enemies. By using a Samaritan in his story, Jesus taught that one should be compassionate to everyone, to everyone, to enemies as well as friends. Okay? The Samaritan put wine and oil on the wounds of the injured man. He applied wine as an antiseptic. Then soothe the wound by coating it with olive oil before wrapping the wound in a linen in a linen bandage okay which i'm gonna I'm read the story to y'all okay always remember to humble thyself as the samaritan did okay all right now when i wrote down the meaning i put samaritan a charitable or helpful person a native or inhabitant of samaria okay a person who is generous in helping those in distress okay also i'm gonna read from y'all luke 10 and 33 which i'm gonna read the whole thing but it says but a certain samaritan as he journeyed came where he was and he saw him he had compassion on him okay make sure that when you keep the law of god it means keeping his commandments okay now let's start off with the good samaritan in luke chapter 10 25 through 37 real quick lesson today just want to speak on the good being a good samaritan okay and then a certain lawyer arose to try to test and tempt him saying teacher what am i to do to inherit everlasting life that is to partake of eternal salvation in the messiah's kingdom jesus said to him what is written in the law how do you read it? Verse 27. And her reply, and he replied, I'm sorry, and he replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live in joy, active, blessed endless life in the kingdom of god and he determined to acquit himself of reproach said to jesus and who is my neighbor okay jesus taking him up replied a certain man was going from jerusalem down to jericho 
because you know god always spoke in parables you know he always used like you know farm animals and the things he was raised up on you know if you notice you know because he was a carpenter you know he he talked about you know farm animals he always used animals and and seeds and farmings and and the things that he did while he was growing up here in the flesh he always used the things that he did and, and what he did here on earth and put them in parables okay so that way people could understand it okay and when you got to know him and believe in him you begin to understand him okay always ask for understanding okay and you will be able to understand but you have to believe a certain man was going from jerusalem down to jericho and he fell among robbers who stripped him of his clothes and belonging i remember i was telling you all this story that happened to me drinking and this remind me of it the, the good samaritan okay my friend who 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 helped me and and you know he saw me and and actually came over and they helped me but but listen okay because this 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 led me to this jesus taking them up replied a certain man was going from jerusalem down to jericho and he fell among robbers who stripped him of his clothes and belongings and beat him and went their way unconcernedly leaving him half dead as it happened that's exactly how i felt okay now by coincidence a certain priest was going down along the road and when he saw him he passed by <laughs> on the other side okay ain't that sad sometimes when people can see you in distress or see something wrong with you they'll see him like let me let me go on across the street so he won't you know ask me for some help or or you know or so you won't have to help them ain't that sad Okay, let's keep going. A Levite likewise came down to the place and saw him and passed by on the other side of the road. But a certain Samaritan, as he traveled along, came down to where he was. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity and sympathy for him and went to him and dressed his wounds, pouring on them oil and wine. Remember I told y'all about the oil and wine that he used for first aid? Okay. Then he set him on his on his beast and brought him which is like his donkey i believe his donkey he set him on his beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him okay i only got a little more and the next day he took out two denaries okay that's two days wages and gave them to the innkeeper saying take care of him and whatever more you spend myself will repay you when returned which of these do you think proved himself a neighbor to him who fell among the robbers? You know, it was the Samaritan, right? He answered, the one who showed pity and mercy to him. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. You see what I'm saying? He's trying to give you an example of how sometimes people can pass you up and pass you by and will not help you. And that's very sad how you can hear the example of people that have money, you know, the tax collector, you know, the other guy, the priest that walked by, you know, the people that have and, and that you thought, you know, the, the man you thought that would have had money would have helped. The man you thought that was a priest you thought would have came and prayed, right, and did something. But it was a stranger, a good Samaritan, just a random stranger that, that walked by and saw him in distress and helped him. Isn't that something, y'all? That's why God always tell us to love one another, which brings us to which brings me to the source of love in first John chapter four, seven through twenty-one. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Wait till I get to this word, y'all. It's <laughs> propitiation. 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 Okay, that's what I'm gonna speak on including this propitiation because i made sure I, I broke this word down okay wait till i get there he that love it not knoweth not god for god is love okay and this was manifested the love of god towards us because that god sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him okay herein is love not that we loved God, but that he loved us and he sent his son to be the propitiation, propitiation. Okay, now let me give you the definition 
of this word but i'm gonna tell you what it meant in this story okay propitiation means the act of gaining or regaining the favor of goodwill of someone or something okay and further on you know i was going over this with my mom because you know we got into this word i told y'all y'all remember like um how i was telling you guys how to play that word game to take this word and try to break it down in every way that you can so you can understand it well here's the word okay and so what we had got out of it my mom was saying she was like trying to get on god's good side you want god to forgive you for something you have done propitiation okay and also when we came back over here in the Bible, we read this verse. This is also what we came up with, y'all. It's amazing, okay? I know we see this definition, but I, I believe propitiation for our sins, okay? Verse That's verse number 10. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loves us and he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. That means the stand-in person, okay? The substitute in place of the anointing sacrifice okay because he gave his life for us that just like he stood in front of the bully he stood in front of of everything so that way we would not have to be the one to die okay in our sins okay he gave his life for us y'all all right let's keep it moving beloved if god so loved us we ought also to love one another no man no man has seen god at any time if we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he that hath given us of his spirit. Verse 14. And he and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him. And he in God. That's why I always say greater is he that is in us, y'all. And we have known and believed that. And, and wait, verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Okay. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Y'all forgive me for like tripping over my words because sometimes i fumble a little bit but y'all catch me if you can i right, pray for the sister <laughs> herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment i'll be very excited in the spirit lord thank you i always tell the lord thank you so much because you know what i know that he's a good god and i know he is yes he is thank you lord okay herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world there is no fear in love. See that? There is no fear in love, but perfect love casted out fear. So remind you, if you have love, you won't have fear. But if you have perfect love, that agape love, you won't have fear. Which meaning that, you know what? You will love others. You know, you wouldn't hate others. You wouldn't, you know, do wrong to others. But you will love one another. Help one another, okay? Let's keep it going. Because fear has torment. You know, that, that that demon spirit that's inside you, that's tearing you up because, you know what, you'll be sitting up here torturing yourself and, and going through so many things because you don't have love in your heart. And, you know, God is love all by himself. And that's why he wants us to have the same love that he does, okay? Because fear has, has torment. He that feareth is not made. He that feareth is not made is perfect love verse 19 we love him because he first loved us okay and this is what i wanted to read that went along with the good samaritan verse okay first john 4 verse 20 and 21 that went with this okay if any man say i love god and hated his brother he is a liar for he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen how can he love god whom he have not seen okay and this commandment have we from him that he who loved God loved his brother, love his brother also. So I'm telling y'all, it's like this. How can you sit up there and say that you love God if you hate your own brother? You know, your own your own brother, your own sister, your own family member. And see, sometimes I want y'all to know this little table is so small. Y'all, y'all wouldn't even believe that I got my big self over there in it. Okay, hold on. 
All right, y'all. I just want y'all to take a walk with me real quick because I told y'all I like walking, you know, and showing y'all the trees and, and the clouds and stuff, okay? Isn't it nice? Look at these clouds. Oh, God is an artist. You know, and like I said, I, I wanted you guys to know that we have to love one another because if we don't, it's like it doesn't make any sense, you know? It's like, how can you say that you love God, right? But you have hate for another person in your heart. You, you, you can actually hate someone else. God is not hate. God is love. He loves everybody no matter, no matter if they're good, no matter if they're bad, no matter if they're big or small. God loves us in all different ways, you know. But the thing is, in order for you to have that love, in order for you to have that love, always remember, you got to love yourself before you can love anybody else and i love y'all okay i just have wanted to to talk to you guys today and come to you guys today and tell you about the good samaritan i love y'all and i'm telling you it makes you feel good when you can make someone else smile if no one told you that you was beautiful today remember that you are just the way that you are y'all and i love you all right later mm -hmm.